Welcome to this week's Cruiser Customizing Tip of the Week. Are you properly covered? Let's take a look. This week I'm going to go out to six of the top motorcycle insurance companies and find out what they suggest you need for motorcycle insurance. After talking with the leading players in motorcycle insurance, I got the best answer, the most concise answer, from Rick Parsons of Foremost Insurance. Hey Rick, Kyle Bradshaw from Cruiser Customizing here. Hey, how's it going? Doing good, doing good. It's been a little while since we talked. Yeah, what's going on? For our customers, I want to be able to give them a, a, a rundown of the basics, what they should really be looking for when they go shopping for insurance. Okay. Some of the key points to, to look at. I called you and said, hey, look, I'm looking for insurance. Don't know what I'm doing. What are your suggestions? Most of the time, the people that buy bikes, their, their primary concern is if something happens to the bike. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's covered in the physical damage, which is known as comp collision. Okay. A lot of people customize their bikes. Right. That I sell typically have $3,500 of custom equipment at no extra charge. My opinion, probably more important, are the liability and the uninsured motorist issues. And that uh, means that if you're operating your motorcycle and you injure somebody else or cause property damage, there are varying levels of insurance coverage uh, starting at 15000 and going up to $250,000 in coverage. On a motorcycle, the liability coverage are, is very inexpensive. The, the most important thing is a, that I write too is the uninsured motorist, and this is what I see happen a lot with the accidents that I that I, I I see come across my desk and friends of mine that have been hurt is that you get in a motorcycle accident, it's usually not your fault. It's somebody that pulls out in front of you. They have some insurance, um, but typically they if they they have insurance, it's just the state minimum, which is fifteen thousand. Right. So you're either we're, you're generally looking at an underinsured or uninsured person that's at fault. For that reason, I try to get my customers at least to get $100,000 of the coverage for that. So your, your bodily injury and your uninsured motorist should be at, at the 100, 300 limit. So that's my opinion. Now take a listen to what some of the other insurance companies said when I asked them the same question. Well, I mean, it's really hard to judge. It's really depending on what you need. The minimum requirements by law would be liability only. Um, our company offers uninsured motorists which covers yourself if somebody hits you that's not insured, and then comp and collision, and that covers the bike if it's stolen, vandalized, or in an accident. Um, your liability limits to others at 100000 per person, 300000 for the accident, and then property damage at 50000 and the same for your uninsured. Every insurance company out there offered some sort of discounts. Many of them offered several. Here are the ones that I found that were most common. Motorcycle Safety Foundation course, if you completed that, that is an additional discount, an additional um, discount for having each bike on the policy, more what? than one. So these are the standard discounts. Good driver, rider safety course, multiple bikes, but check this one out. This absolutely floored me. We give a motorcycle license discount if you have a motorcycle endorsement. What? Did you say if I have a motorcycle endorsement? Discount? What's the discount for having a motorcycle license? Um, well, it depends really on the premium, but it's going to run you about 5%. Calling insurance companies, you can expect to be on hold. Hello, Davis. Flow in. <laughs> no, no flow. Not here. She probably somewhere uh, in. The, I don't know, honestly. Unless you just put the TV on, you probably find her. Yeah, that's probably. I, I could probably Google her as well. Yes, sir, maybe. Yeah. There you go. Turn me on. What would make Progressive the right choice for me? We have a fact that we're almost here 24 just by far in motorcycle insurance in the country, unless you got a crotch ride. Josh here, our customer service manager, and he has a specific example of when he swapped insurance companies and he found a great way to save some money. All right, so I started riding when I was about 23. You know, I got a brand new sport bike, shopping around insurance, and everything was just extremely expensive for it. So how did you how did you rectify that? How did you get that swapped around so you got cheaper insurance? Um, I started talking to friends and. The key to that was actually having the bike as a secondary vehicle. If their bike is the only vehicle on the policy, they look at it as your primary vehicle, even if you're hardly riding it. Now, what I did is um, I had my car and my bike on the same policy, car being the primary vehicle, the bike being the secondary vehicle, and now I have enough insurance to cover all of my assets and some, as well as $2,000 worth of my gear, and I pay $500 a year.
Nice. The, the thing about it is, is that, you know, I write too, so I understand this. I'm not just talking numbers that I don't know about. I mean, right. I've, I've actually seen it where people get hurt and they don't have the right kind of coverage. This, what do you, you mean? I didn't, I didn't spend another hundred dollars and get the coverage for that. Right. You know, anybody will spend a hundred bucks on a, uh, on a set of chrome foot pegs or something. Mm -hmm. Why not make sure that your bike and your and your uh, your body is properly insured too? Great point. You know, for the extra, and generally it's just a hundred dollar swing to go from cheap ass insurance to good insurance. Thank you for watching this week's Cruiser Customizing Tip of the Week. Check out the story section of the community to read the specifics on this tip. Until next week, take care and ride safe.